Bloodborne is one of the greatest games I've ever played, but does it hold up in 2024? Let's see. But before, let's get a little backstory down. So Bloodborne is about this guy named Hunter. He gets transported oh. to this hellscape named Yarnum, and his task is killing all these eldritch gods to free himself from the dream. So that's the gist. But let me get to my actual experience in the game. So when I originally started playing Bloodborne, I was in middle school, and I genuinely wanted to play it because I was a hardcore gamer, and I saw that as a rite of passage, one of the Soulsborne feet crab editions would be a great addition to my finished gamer pinwall. So I booted it up beaming ear to ear like the girl in this pic, but once I got in, I had many things hit me other than five black men. One of the first was a group of wolves I had to fight with no weapon, and it's possible to get through them, but for a hardcore gamer, I was pretty shit back then, and I lost. I got me a weapon, neutered the wolves, and actually got into the city of Yarnum, a beautiful Lovecraftian nightmare with some friendly looking people, but as the video game protagonist, I decided I had to kill all of those guys, and I was out there fighting a literal mob of ugly motherfuckers, setting me on fire to straight trying to put more bullets in me than Tupac. But after all that bullshit, I met the Cleric Beast, one of my first ever Soulsborne bosses. In my little brain, I was gonna beat this boss, show the world how great of a gamer I was, and gave up in three hours. And then time past three fucking years but I was now a freshie in high school and decided instead of going out on the weekends and socializing, I decided to blue up Bloodborne because I had a brain defect. So I went through all the aforementioned bullshit, but this time when I faced the cleric beast, I had half a brain cell and I beat him in 15 tries. And this fucking high is one of the reasons I love doing Bloodborne. If you've never played a Soulsborne game, you'll never understand the ecstasy of getting bent over by a boss for 15 hours only to get up, punch him in the face and reverse the rolls. The hours you spend getting ready to beat him, running through your head, just shaking like you're genuinely gonna die in real life. Just the way Bloodborne sucks me and it makes me feel like the Yarnami savior. Like Father Gascoigne, he goes from regular creep to fucking werewolf in a matter of minutes, and the game just throws this at you totally unprompted and expects you to deal with it. In other games, it would have just been a death sentence, but in Bloodborne you've already got all the tools to beat the thing, you just have to figure it out. So if you try and shoot him with your gun, he stops attacking, gets some damage in. It's all intuitive, but not in all aspects of the game sadly. The map. The world of Yarnum truly fits with Bloodborne because it's twists and turns like a weird gymnast girl at your school. There's quite a lot of backtracking and key bullshit, but let's take Vicar Amelia for example. You are given a pointing direction to her and cold to go kill the dog woman, but did you really think you're gonna get given a map? Not a chance in fucking hell. You're expected to remember which way you went and if you don't, too bad, get better memory you brain rot child. But after multiple encounters with strange white men in alleys and women trying to take me away in a sack, yes I know surprising, not the strange white men in the alley but the woman wanted to bag me, these games got it all. But speaking of women wanting to bag you, I haven't introduced you to the plain doll. What kind of name is that? Hey, I don't make the names you know, you know what, fuck it. Your name is now Marin. So you and Marin meet up in this place called the Hunter's Dream, which is Bloodworm's attempt to clean up the map fuckery. And to some avail, Marin's whole purpose is to hold your hand and level you up. But back to the map. This is the Bloodborne map. And it sucks. If you don't really have the brains to backtrack and find where you're supposed to go, search up tutorials. I committed game reviewer Endaku search up tutorials, but don't execute me as yet. You gotta understand, after you beat the crazy dog lady, you're given away back to the Hooters Dream. And then you're expected to intuition your way to the next boss. I spent five hours in Central Yarnum trying to figure out where I needed to go, only to realize that it's a fucking hidden alleyway next to the boss arena. So you can see why I completely lost the fucking plot, but Bloodborne makes up for this, and I'm gonna sound like the ultimate games journalist here, but the atmosphere. I know it's cliche, but there's no other way to describe Bloodborne's blood-tinged streets, shit-smeared walls, and less-than-friendly locals. The game tells you where you are by map or no map, but before we get to my absolute favorite piece of the game, I gotta tell you guys about my second favorite boss, these Squidward-looking fuckers named the Living Failures, who spam white pebbles at you. But this boss fight isn't my favorite because of the combat, or the atmosphere, or any flowery bullshit like that. These guys get the piss taken out of them by literally every other boss in Bloodborne, but it's their music. But now we can see the ultimate boss fight here, that I think just summarizes the entire game. If you haven't already realized, in Bloodborne, you're in a dream, and Gearman, at the end of the game, looks at you as strong enough to leave and offers you, and you know what, let him say it. Good hunter. You've done well. The night is near its end. Now, I will show you mercy. 
you will die. Forget the dream and awake under the morning sun. You will be freed from this terrible hunter's dream. And then you start the fight. And unless you're massively over level, German is going to beat you six ways from Sunday, with him being able to parry using elements like Father Gascoigne, becoming an even greater monster. And he even has story significance because if you collected the dried umbilical cords, yes, you heard me right, dried umbilical cords, don't take it up with me. Take it up with Hidetaka Miyazaki. You just have to walk through the tentacle door. Yeah, I thought so. So down to even the last moments of the game, German is actually trying to save you. He wants wants you to be free to dream because he himself is trapped there. But since you ate all those umbilical cords, you can now take his place as an elder god slug and get the girl at the end. So when you kill him, you either become a slug or if you are pussy and didn't eat the umbilical cords, you now take his place. Overall, I say Bloodborne, still one of the best Souls games that you can play to this day. Remember to eat your umbilical oats, kids.